Hey, 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 what's going on, everyone? You are now listening to Resilience in Action with Aaron Brown. What's going on, everyone? This is uh, Resilience in Action with Aaron Brown, and I am here with John Jefferson. Man, so so first of all, let me give you just, I'm not even going to give you John's bio, right? I'm just going to let you know that if you're in the Lynchburg or the surrounding areas, mm-hmm. like he's definitely someone you need to collaborate with, you need to connect with, and someone you need to, to know. So John, hey. Right. Thank you for being on today. And no problem, man. All love. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is John Jefferson. I'm the uh, owner of Aim for Greatness Clothing. Behind that brand is Aim Aim for Greatness to be the best you can be each and every day. Wake up with a purpose. Wake up, you know, to be positive in other people's lives, not just yours. And just be a difference maker. Got you. So where... So, okay, let's start right there. Where did that come from? Where did that um, inspiration come from? Since I was young, I'm going to say around about 10, uh, 11, somebody always told me, like, you're an old man in a young man's body. Okay. So, and I always, I talk to grown people at, like, a younger age, like, I've been there before, and just having that positive outcome to other people like that, and aim for greatness, I always had, like, that background to, Go for the stars. Okay. Be something that I always wanted to be, no matter what the naysayers say. So I always been positive when I was younger, and that inspiration came from that. Nice, nice. Did you have anyone um in your life that contributed to that positivity? I would say my father, most yeah. definitely. Talk about him a little bit. See, now my dad, he is that guy that you go to him with something, he's not going to give you the answer that you want. He's going to give you the answer that you actually need to Got educate you. you to get through a situation. So Absolutely. I might come him with like a, a problem like, hey, dad, I don't know why this is going this way. But if you look at it this way, son, you got to put your feelings in everybody else's, you know, demeanor and stuff. Like You can't think for yourself all the time. You got to put other people's feelings into account so you can see where they come from that point of view. So everything I go to him is something that I'm going through, but I know I'm getting a positive response out of it. So he's definitely a, a big inspiration for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, tell us a little bit um, about your childhood, about your upbringing. Uh, growing up, was it was shaky. If I can keep it real, which it was real shaky because uh, I had a lot of people tell me I wasn't going to be, be nothing. Just based on decisions I made at a younger age. Hey, I'm young. So, of course, I'm going to work off the emotions more than critical thinking. So, I had, you know, growing up, it was, it was shaky. It was positive. It was motivated. And then it was kind of negative. So, Growing up, it was in between, if I can say that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, how did you find your way through that situation, through those, um, through those shaky situations? Oh, most definitely God, and God, yeah. and then myself, and then just surrounding myself around people that can get me the right resources of being successful. Yeah, I'm going to say God first, me finding myself through God. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Okay, and you're, you're pretty, you're pretty uh, spiritual. So yes, um, yes. that's uh, that's good to hear. I'm glad you're able to um, talk talk about that a little bit. Did you um, grow up in the church? Oh, <laughs> if you if you ask <laughs> my, my family, yeah. But um, a majority, it was I was in and out of church. Okay, but I you know growing every Sunday morning or something like that, we always play like gospel music. So in between, yeah, you can say I was in the church a little bit I didn't want to go at 10 years old when I want to play the game but I was into it a little bit yeah 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 I I can see that I can I can definitely I can definitely see that like as a kid like you you don't you want to go do what's fun and sitting in church and I know when um back in the day when my dad used to to take us to church we'd be in there all day yeah I'm (laughs) all day and I'm the type of I'm the type of person that a kid well to still to this day that I have to have something to eat before I stay somewhere an hour or hour and a half long. If not, I'm not a happy person. (laughs) That's the reason why I never like going to church. Not because I didn't believe in the man upstairs. It was because I know church started at 11 and it don't end to 2. I did did not like that growing up. You was getting a little hangry? Yeah, most definitely. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's let's talk about, like, all right, you said making sure, you said um, 
you said the belief in yourself, you know, mm-hmm. through God and also making sure you surround yourself with the, with the right people. Talk about yeah. that. What was that like? how did you, how did you navigate that? How did you figure out who was there for you and who you could count on and then who was there and is just trying to maybe take advantage or something like that? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I would say based on the people's emotions, when I come to them with problems, Mm-hmm. I dictated that, you know, the people who I come with problems with, ah, be quiet, man, you, you've been soft. I kind of gravitated away from them because that's not making me no better. It's making me more angry. Mm-hmm. And just to answer your second question is the people I went to on positive, the same thing is based off their emotions. How do they take my feelings into their uh, consideration? So that's how I based it off like that. Because like I said, majority of the people that I went to for some positive between either between my uh, dad or like close friends. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Um, what is the, what is your longest friendship right now? Oh, that's tough. I got, I, I don't, I don't want to just say one. I got a couple of them. Right, what's they, your, they might be chiming what's in. What's the, <laughs> what's the, what's around like a, the, like a general like years? How long? Oh, uh, let's say one of my friends, Ty, I'm going to say about, 13 years. 13 years. That's yeah. Amazing. Everybody else is like high school. So I'm around them. I'm going to say around like eight years. Mm-hmm. But my my, boy, my homeboy Ty is like 13 years. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Especially building those connections and those relationships um, at a young age and being able to to grow and progress in your mm-hmm. life and also watch them and grow and progress. And, right. you know, you two find a way to grow and progress together. Right. Know? So that's, that's beautiful. I, I, I always come in like long friendships um, yeah. because they're so, they're so important. Right. And you kind of can really chime in with that background of growing up because everybody, everybody's raising it has been different. Mm-hmm. Like the upbringing, I meant to say has been different. So you can kind of learn from that culture, how, you know, the do's and the don'ts. So that's how I really picked up on who my friends was. Yeah, you know, work and stuff like that. Yeah, they didn't have you out in them streets, did they? Nah, I was. Well, my family didn't, so no. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Um, are did you were you like did you grow up in Lynchburg or did you just yeah, move there? Raised. Born and raised yeah, in Lynchburg. Raised, yeah. Lynchburg, mm-hmm. VA. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what has Lynchburg been like over the years? How has it evolved? Um, in your eyes. Uh, I would say being creative like you can see the potential in the city of course we're not like a big city that has a lot of funds but you can see people have that trying mind to make it better Mm -hmm. even though we might have shootings and drug dealings that's everywhere but you can see the promise in our city i would say being creative and create like different avenues for the younger crowd to interact with different people and different perspectives of age groups that's awesome absolutely that's um something that i saw you know, in my time, my time in Lynchburg mm-hmm. as well is just seeing how the community like comes together and can actually like make things happen. Right. Show that promise. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And at the end of the day, uh, that's 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 what's going to get a lot of people through is showing that promise, showing that hope that there there can be better and we're working on it. Right. Because we so in the in the city of Lynchburg, we so uh seeing people do something but not be too consistent with it we might have something that's keeping us out of trouble for only two years and it's shut down now we back to acting like hooligans now because our source of positivity is gone now because something shut down somebody died in it or got shot up fighting is gone so now we can just revert back to where we started from which is trouble yeah yeah um what have you done um to to provide that type of um, environment for the youth out in Lynchburg? Oh, then well, I was referring back to consistency. I do a lot of uh, activities with football, mm-hmm. back to school, um, giveaways. I think two months ago, I fed like 50 homeless people at a, at a center. Mm-hmm. And that was, again, that's a good thing I did. Um, just basically just being involved at a young age. If you see a younger person entwined into his city to be great, to make a great impact, you will have other young adults follow you because we don't really listen to older, older adults because we feel like they don't know what they're talking about, mm-hmm. which is the back, backwards way they're thinking because they have already been there before. Yeah. So, but when you have a younger person 
we'll gravitate to them more because they can kind of be more relatable. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I know that that's something I I've noticed as well is, you know, right. You know, you, because you're mo- more relatable, you know, more relatable. And then that inspires them to do something a little different So Right. And now social media is even more of a, a high performance thing. Now you got social yeah. media and they see more of young adults being an impact or giving away something like, okay, let me follow that so I can be just like them. I'd rather you follow me or something like that than I'm hurting someone. You're going to try to follow the same footsteps. Mm-hmm. I want to make that, want to be that um, difference maker in a Absolutely. positive way. Absolutely. How do you feel about like um, the content that you're, that you watch? Do you, um, do you like monitor what you input into your, your mental and what is your, what would be your, advice for someone looking to like change the way they think and the type of content that they're um that they're taking in i would say to become better you gotta you gotta write down things what are what some things are important to you and then you know and then you write down the good things about yourself and you write down the things that you need to work on Mm -hmm. the things you need to work on make that the content that you need to see every day if it's financially spiritually emotionally put that have that going on your social media so they can help you out. That's the that's the best advice I can give someone is like what's important to you to become better. And then, you know, everything else and fighting in and whatever you look at of, you know, on social media, delete that and like change your whole perspective of how you look at social media. And how can it educate you to be become better? That's my advice I can give to someone. That's that's some solid advice right there. Um I, I've never, I never thought about like doing the, um, doing like doing the list. I'm always just like, okay, I know I need to, you know, watch at least 30, 30 minutes of positive educational, motivational okay. content. YouTube podcasts, man, like financial literacy, like, yes. do, like look at something that's going to benefit you in the near future. So when somebody come to you with big terms, you know how to pick it up because you have coached yourself to be educational. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't always retreat back to the negativity. You're not going to learn because when you want to make a good, decent amount of money or have a big opportunity, you have to know certain terms to be successful. You can't just be like, uh, I don't know. They're going to be like, all right, next man up, next lady up, because you, you're you not serious about what you want to be in your life. Yeah. And speaking of being serious about what you want to be in life, let's shift gears and let's talk to aim for greatness. Okay? Because... <laughs> How did that start? How did Aim for Greatness start? Well, yes. it started in 2018. But first of all, I was making hats. But then I realized, I was like, do I really want to make hats? But do I really want to be an impact? Mm-hmm. So when it came around, I, I dropped a little, little bit of different names and pray and grind. But something stuck with me when I said Aim for Greatness. This is a light bulb just clicked off. And I, I automatically said, okay, this is going to be what I needed to be. So Aim for Greatness came along basically like my childhood because, like, I refer it back to that I grew up with people telling me I wasn't going to be anything. Mm-hmm. So I, I always had a chip on my shoulder to be great. So Aim for a greater greater use. So then greatness, that's what that came along with. Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how has, so, how yeah. has things been um, th- since 2018? Oh, it's been great. It's been real, real a blessing just to see people come to you with, hey, man, I love what you're doing. You impact my day each and every day. You don't have to always sell somebody something. I'd rather educate you to get through your life in a positive way. Yeah, If you put it in your mind that I want you to buy this from me, you're not going to last long. It's more of about the impact that you cause to others in a good way. Like selling stuff is cool, but you don't want to be known for just selling something. You want to be known to change an out, you know, outlet of somebody's mind. That's how I want to carry this brand. 10 to 15 years later, people are still talking about Aim for Granted. And he's still doing it. Yeah. You know, that's how I want to do. I want to have buildings and uh, rebuild schools and do this, and activities, grants and stuff like we grew up on and seeing and doing. That's how I want to impact life like that. Others' lives like that. So I don't want to just be just selling clothes. Nah, that's going to die down soon. I want to be a stronger impact. That's a, it's a, this the bigger vision. I bigger love pic- that. Bigger picture. Yeah, most that's, definitely. It's, 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, scholarships and, and grants and stuff like that. That is, that is thinking of others in such a selfless way. Right. You know, like awesome. Like you have your, your clothing brand, which is amazing. Um, but Thank what else can, can you provide you to help? What else can you provide to, to help and encourage those that are, that are, purchasing your your merchandise and just those around in life in general right fire you, like with my merch like i don't want you to wear it because it looked good i want you to wear it because you know the meaning behind it and what you're trying to excel to be in your life absolutely okay it's cool to have it oh yeah go good with my shoes a nice little cut i don't want you to come to me with that i want you to come hey i wear this shirt every day to work now i got promoted to be the top boss that's what i want that's the conversation i want to speak to you about it's cool to be looking good with my gear, but what have I done to impact you with my merch? Why did you buy my merch? I love that. I love yep. that. Like it's it's bigger than just than just, just putting the, it on, just the hat, just the shirt, and just wear. Yeah. Like yeah, absolutely. The message behind it is is so it's so straight to the point. Um, right. You, it, there's no way to get lost in translation, or well, I don't really understand. You you are saying exactly what you need to say with with aim for greatness, right? Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Hey 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 y'all! Listen, it is time for some action. If you are enjoying the content that you've been listening to, I need you to rate and review. That's it. That's all. Make sure you go to wherever you're listening to this podcast and rate and review it for us. We appreciate you so much. Let's get back to some resilience. What um, what obstacles have you faced um, during this journey in like launching your clothing brand and you know maybe dealing with some people who really didn't believe that you can do it? Oh, um, <laughs> that's a good question. I had a lot of people be there for me for a limited time. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I love what you're doing. But then I asked them for some resources. Uh, no, I don't know, man. Find somebody else. Well, I had people that feel like they was really for me when I started this brand. They gravitated away from me because now they see, oh, snap, he's really trying to make a difference. Mm-hmm. I don't think I had the time and patience to really be with him to do that. And then and make a difference. People come at you. Because it's it's the hype, they hype, yeah. But then you know, oh snap, oh, everything feel like it's falling down. I'm gone. I'm not gonna try to help them. I, I went through a lot of this, it's attracting a lot of people that wasn't for me, wasn't for my brand. That's that's the only obstacle I really did. I had to really just narrow down the people that was really for me, doing this brand, having what, this brand. And what helped you? What helped you aside from um like them not showing up like what else or is there anything else that helped you like kind of weed out those individuals that really wasn't down a ride the way you needed them to Hmm, let's see it's it's so much i don't went through with this stuff uh with this brand uh i'm i'm gonna say i'm gonna tell you the same thing this really this weeding out those people and and just finding like the people that's going to benefit me like because i have got organizations now that i will that i have people who are smarter than me and give me more ideas to how to benefit the community even more got you got you wonderful wonderful um what what advice would you give someone looking to start their own um clothing brand Oh, that's easy. I, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> I would say when you start something, don't do it for the money. Do it for the impact. I would say the money is going to come eventually. Either going to be faster or slower or in between. But do it with your heart and understand why you're doing this business. Whatever you do, brand could be anything, clothing, lawn care, whatever. Just know the why behind your brand. So what people ask you about why are you doing this such a thing, you giving them an educational reason, reasons why you started this. So it's important to have your why when you start a business because that's going to take you 
far, super far, mm -hmm. when they know why you're doing a certain thing. You just can't say, oh, I just woke up in the morning. I just wanted to do it, get some money. Like, oh, so you're not really doing it for the people. You're kind of doing it to make your pockets fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely how that, definitely how that, why. And then write down some things that you really are, like write down goals that you want to accomplish in the next month or the next couple of years. And then, you know, you know, exit them out when you make that happen. Are you big on in goal writing? I know. I'm going to be honest with you. I do not write down my goals as much as I should be, mm -hmm. but I just memorize them in my head that I need to do. You know, I write, I write some of them down, small goals. I mean, small goals are big goals. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all one, but I do not. I more put it in my head and get to it, but I need to start writing them down. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Do you do anything um, to like get yourself mentally prepared for just a day? Like what does your morning routine look like? Uh, I was a podcast, definitely podcast. podcast. Different clothing bands podcast, um, financial literacy podcast. Just more of a podcast guy, type of guy in the mornings and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Or listen to some type of music that's. I don't always listen to rap. I, I like R and B because R and B calms my soul. Gotcha. You know, <laughs> so I like R and B early in the morning just to you know make my mind be calm so I can really figure out what I need to do for the day. So podcasts and like R and B music. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. What's your um, what's your favorite podcast that you're listening to right now? So many YouTube is, is lit right now. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say um, Million Dollars Worth of Game. If you ever heard of those, them people, mm -hmm. I would say um, what is some other ones? It's a clothing brand called World of Vision. I um, I listen to them, and God is dope. It's like a clothing brand. Gotcha. God is, I, I've seen those shirts everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely God is dope. That's, I think that's the only top three I listen to right this now. This is the top three. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And, um, oh, sorry. T.D. Jakes. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, T.D. Jakes. Can't most forget, definitely him. Can't forget T.D. Can't forget that. Yeah, you can't. That's the, that's that guy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So are, do you, are you like a, a reader? Oh yes, yeah. I love what you read. what you reading? I, I, well, I have read a whole lot of books, but I got I just bought these couple books right here. Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh huh. That one, and I got uh, this one right here. If you can see this, how full is your bucket? Okay. Yeah, okay. this and now I need you to lock in on this book. If you haven't gotten already, go on Amazon. This book is really really good when it comes to how to think in different um, perspectives. Got yeah, you. I'll definitely got put that in the show check, notes. check it out on Amazon. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. What um do you have anything that you want to share? Anything in particular that you want the listeners to know about you or about life? And you know, maybe some some magic way of overcoming some types of obstacles. Well, I, I would I would piece on a life. For the listeners here, I just want y'all to believe in yourself no matter what you're going through. I have had a lot of people tell me you won't be this, you can't do this, or that's impossible. No, it's impossible because you didn't try it. Mm. It only becomes possible when I do it and like, oh, dang, I did not know it was going to happen because you did not try. Be that person that's tried. Try it out first. If you don't like it, it's cool. If you do, it's cool. You only going to be able to judge yourself. Yeah. Don't don't worry about what others say about you. The the closest people might be the people that far be far away from you sooner or later in life. The more you want to be successful, the more people people you lose. That's not for you. And I would say go with your heart. You know, okay. go with your heart. Never be scared to learn new things. You don't know it all. So don't act like you know it all. I don't care what your DPA was. Life is a whole different teaching from school. Mm -hmm. Life will teach you something that's like I never thought of this. So you don't know it all. So always reach out to people that know better, know more than you do. And surround yourself with people that's way more smarter than you. Because you can't be the only smart person in the room. You all the y'all going down. Uh-huh. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You can't be the only person that can think outside the box. Everybody in the room has to think outside the box. So what I'm referring that to is surround yourself around people that want, want different things and more successful than you, more money. Um, 
did more anything because that's going to educate you to put your your mindset, your money in different spots that can help you grow. So surround yourself with great people. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, John, where can we find you on social and how can we support you? Okay. You can find me on my website, aimforgreatnessclothing.com. Instagram is JJ Customs, JJ underscore Customs with a Z, 13. And Facebook is Aim for Greatness Clothing. That's where you can find me at all my platforms. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And um, we can we can grab merch and stuff from any one of those. Yes, yes, ma'am. Perfect, perfect. I'm just I'm I'm trying to you know get you listen senseless and selfless plug. Like everyone, I'm bring on this on this podcast. I want I bring you on so not only we can talk and and learn a little bit about you know your life experience, but also. Right plug your stuff <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah you got to promote your stuff man <laughs> yes absolutely i want you to plug it because this is a platform that is growing every single day and somebody's going to listen to this maybe a month or two from now and like hey i need the i need the, that hat he had on that hat john had mm-hmm. on is fire let me go see if i can find that right yeah perfect okay yeah. all right listen I have, I'm going to let you get out of here, right? I got one question. I got one last question for you. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. John, what what does resilience mean to you? Mm. It's a lot. Mm. It's a loaded question. Yeah. What do you think? And I'm going to give you mine. (laughs) What do I think? Yeah. So shout out to you because I think you're probably one of the only people that was like, you know what, Aaron, let me spin this back on you and tell me, and you tell me what you think. So um, resilience to me is, is mastering the fall, right? Yeah. There you go. Is, is master, is mastering the fall because falling is inevitable. Uh, and we're right. going to, and we're going to do it, but we are, we need to learn how to fall. I, 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 um, compare it to like a stunt person, like right. that stunt person practices falling yeah. so yeah. they can see, fall that's, correctly. See, that's that's why I was going to come back and say, you have to fall first to figure out the right way to not do the same thing again. Absolutely. That's that's my take on that. Cause I could have gave you a thousand ways, but I that's why I had to think. I was like, well, how I'm gonna put this one? But you have to really learn, you know, how to fall and how to get back up, basically. Yeah. Listen, I asked this is one of this is the one question, aside from like, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. But this right. is the only question I ask everyone. And I've done, I think I've done like maybe 18 interviews so uh-huh. far and i've gotten 18 different answers like there's right. there it, it, it is all it's so pers- it's so much you can put into that it's not exactly. it's not a right or wrong answer it's what you feel is exactly what you definitely referred to that's exactly the same why i would said it you have to learn how to do your thing and how to figure out okay we can't make these step type of steps anymore yeah. i cannot prevent myself from going back to the wrong path yeah so yeah that's my that's my way of resilience. And that's resilience in action, 100%. Right. Taking the, that charge. <laughs> exactly. Taking the charge. I've never, see? Never heard it. Taking the charge. Basketball. Like, take, taking that. Yes. Yep. Yes. So fire. John, that was, that was so fire. Thank you so much. No you know, problem. Hey, for hanging out with us um, here at yeah, Resilience. I, I got nothing but time with this, with this positive. Listen. <laughs> Never, I, I, ain't got, I ain't got no time with my hands. <laughs> I know that's right. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Resilience in Action with Aaron Brown. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. And I want you to remember one thing. Resilience in Action will always lead to a greater human experience.